The New Palgrave Dictionary of Economics, Second Ed, is an eight-volume reference work on economics, edited by Stephen N. Derlauf and Lawrence E. Blumen published by Palgrave Macmillan. It runs to 7,680 pages and 5.8 million words. It includes 1,844 articles, of which 1057 are new articles and, from the earlier edition, 80 classic essays, 157 revised articles, and 550 edited articles. It is the product of 1,506 contributors, 25 of them Nobel laureates in economics. Articles are classified according to Journal of Economic Literature classification codes. The new Palgrave is also available in a hyperlinked online version. Article information by abstract, outline, and keywords is available without subscription. These are accessed by go-to or quick searches or alphabetical article links by first letter here or by drilling to primary, secondary or tertiary buttons of the Dell classification codes to search for links here. Online content is added to the 2008 edition from quarterly updates links here. The first edition was titled The New Palgrave, a Dictionary of Economics, edited by John Eatwell, Murray Milgate, and Peter Newman and published in four volumes. It is discussed in a section below. Access to full text articles for both editions and post-2008 updates is available online by subscription, whether of an organization, a person, or a person through an organization. Editors and contributors of the revised 2008 edition. The general editors are Stephen N. Derlauf and Lawrence E. Bloom the associate editors are Roger Backhouse, Professor of the History and Philosophy of Economics, Birmingham, UK. Mark Bills, Professor of Economics, Rochester, USA. Moshe Butchinsky, Professor of Economics, University of California, Los Angeles, USA. Gregory Clark, Professor of Economics, University of California, Davis, USA. Catherine Eckel, Professor of Economics and Political Economy, University of Texas at Dallas, USA. Marcel Fashomps, Professor of Development Economics, Oxford, UK. David Genesova, Professor, Hebrew University of Jerusalem, Israel. James Hines, Professor of Economics, University of Michigan, USA. Barry Ikes, Professor of Economics, Penn State University, USA. Yanis Ioannides, Professor of Economics, Tufts University, USA. Eckhard Geneber, Professor of Economics, University of Mannheim, Germany. Garrett Jones, Associate Professor of Economics, George Mason University. Shelley Lundberg, Caster Professor of Economics, University of Washington, USA. John Natchbar, Professor of Economics, Washington University, USA. Leo Arnian, Professor of Economics, University of California, Los Angeles, USA. June Park, Professor of Economics, Texas A&M University, USA. John Carl Schultz, Professor of Economics, University of Wisconsin-Madison, USA. Christopher Tabor, Professor of Economics, University of Wisconsin-Madison, USA. Bruce Weinberg, Professor of Economics at The Ohio State University, USA. Other high-profile contributors include Darren Asimoglu, John Bates Clark Award, member of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences, author of the forthcoming book Introduction to Modern Economics Growth. Philippe Argyen, 2001 Yo Janssen Award, co-editor of Handbook of Economic Growth. William Baumol, author of Good Capitalism, Bad Capitalism, and the Economics of Growth and Prosperity. Alan Blinder, Vice Chairman, Board of Governors, U.S. Federal Reserve, Member of Council of Economic Advisors, Member of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences, Author of Hard Heads, Soft Hearts, Tough-Minded Economics for a Just Society, Samuel Bowles, 
served as an economic advisor to the World Bank and the International Labor Organization, co-author of Schooling in Capitalist America and Microeconomics, Behavior, Institutions and Evolution. Tyler Cowen, New York Times columnist, author of Discover Your Inner Economist, Peter Diamond, Nemers Prize, member of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences, National Academy of Sciences, author of Saving Social Security, A Balanced Approach, Avinash Dixit, President of the American Economic Association, member of the National Academy of Sciences, the American Academy of Arts and Sciences, corresponding fellow of the British Academy, former president of the Econometric Society, Hugh Dixon, author of Surfing Economics, William Easterly, author of The Elusive Quest for Growth, Economists' Adventures and Misadventures in the Tropics and the White Man's Burden, Why the West's Efforts to Aid the Rest Have Done So Much Ill and So Little Good, Stanley Fisher, Governor of the Bank of Israel, formerly President of Citigroup International, Robert H. Frank, author of The Economic Naturalist, Douglas Holt Seekin, Chief Economic Advisor to the McCain Campaign, Stephen Levitt, author of Free Economics, Paul Plemperer, Foreign Honorary Member of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences, elected 2005, Fellow of the British Academy, elected 1999, Richard Posner, Judge, United States Court of Appeals for the Seventh Circuit, Jeffrey Sachs, author of The End of Poverty, Thomas Sargent, former president of the American Economic Association, former president of the Econometric Society, member of the American Academy and National Academy, Robert Schiller, author of The Subprime Solution, How Today's Global Financial Crisis Happened and What to Do About It. Nobel laureate contributors include George Akloff, Morris Alles, Kenneth Arrow, Robert Howman, James Buchanan, Gerard Debreu, Milton Friedman, Clive Granger, John Hisani, James Heckman, Leonid Kantorovich, Vasily Leontief, Harry Markowitz, Robert C. Merton, Roger Myerson, Edmund Phelps, Edward Prescott, Paul Samuelson, Amartya Sen, Herbert A. Simon, Vernon L. Smith, George Stigler, Joseph E. Stiglitz, James Tobin, and William Vickrey. A complete list of articles and associated authors is here. The New Palgrave, A Dictionary of Economics. The New Palgrave, A Dictionary of Economics is the title of the first New Palgrave edition. It is a four-volume reference edited by John Eatwell, Murray Milgate, and Peter Newman. It has 4,000 pages of entries, including 1,300 subject entries, and 655 biographies. There were 927 contributors, including 13 Nobel laureates in economics at the time of first publication. It includes about 50 articles from Palgrave's Dictionary of Political Economy. It was roughly twice the length of its predecessor and differed further in excluding most subjects not on economics or closely related to its practice. Contents include list of entries AZ, including cross-references at the beginning of each volume. Volume 1, AD. Volume 2, EJ. Volume 3, KP. Volume 4, QZ. Appendix I. Entries by author Appendix 2. Biographies of persons in Palgrave's Dictionary but not the new Palgrave Appendix 3. Entries by author in Palgrave's Dictionary Appendix IV. Subject Index, 10 pp. Index, 38 pp. Subject Index is distinct from the 2008 edition, which uses the gel codes. The 1987 edition employs its own Subject Index with each article entered under exactly one classification, history of thought and doctrine, classical economics, Marx and economics, doctrines, schools of thought, cognate disciplines, philosophy, methodology, rationality and behavior, anthropology, history, natural and human resources, agriculture and land, environment, labor and employment, population, justice, inequality, and discrimination.
social and political organization, public finance, welfare economics, planned economies, social choice and public choice, law and economics, economic organization, economic organization, transaction cost, industrial organization, monopoly and oligopoly, conflict and war, game theory, risk and uncertainty, techniques, Mathematical economics, mathematical methods, statistical methods, private accounting and social accounting, econometrics, time series, money and macroeconomics, finance, monetary theory and institutions, international monetary economics, macroeconomic theory and policy, dynamics, growth and development. Investment, cycles, economic growth, technical change, development, international trade, spatial economics, value and capital, competition, utility, consumers demand and index numbers, production, cost and supply, general equilibrium, capital theory, distribution, miscellaneous. American Economic Association, Palgrave's Dictionary, Economics Libraries, A Royal Economic Society, Biographies by Country, Britain and Ireland, Germany, Austria, Low Countries, Italy and S, Europe, Scandinavia, Europe, America, Asia, Australia and New Zealand, Japan, Africa, America and Caribbean. Reviews General Remarks Reviewing the 1987 edition for the New York Times, Robert M. Solo concluded that, this is a dictionary only in a very special sense. There are excellent survey articles, in various sizes, on various subjects but the best of them are written by professionals for professionals, according to Solo. Graduate students in economics would find the dictionary useful, but most of the articles would be inaccessible to non-economists, even undergraduate students of the liberal arts. For economists, however, the dictionary provided many excellent overviews of contemporary research. In response, editor Milgate confirmed that the articles were written for an audience of professional economists, and so neither for the general reading public nor for specialist economists. Mathematics and contemporary economics according to Milgate, New Palgrave downplayed mathematics, in comparison to leading economic journals. Only 24% of the columns contained any mathematics while only 25% of the most recent issue of the American Economic Review in fact lacked mathematics, according to Milgate, who averred that the air's mathematical usage was typical of leading contemporary journals. The new Palgrave's usage of mathematics was the reciprocal of the contemporary professions. It must be concluded that the new Palgrave actually underrepresented the mathematical element in modern economics, and underrepresented it to a significant degree, wrote Milgate in 1992. Commenting on contemporary economics, Solo described technical economics as its essential infrastructure. There is a lesson in the fate of Palgrave. Economics is no longer a fit conversation piece for ladies and gentlemen. It has become a technical subject. Like any technical subject it attracts some people who are more interested in the technique than the subject. That is too bad, but it may be inevitable. In any case, do not kid yourself. The technical core of economics is indispensable infrastructure for the political economy. That is why, if you consult Palgrave looking for enlightenment about the world today, you will be led to technical economics, or history, or nothing at all. More advanced mathematics was implicit in some of the articles, many of which were well written and reasonably accessible. Solo recommended the broad and deep article on game theory by Robert J. Ammon for well-equipped graduate students, along with John Hisani's article on bargaining theory. The articles on financial economics were written by the best people, Stephen Ross, Robert Merton, and others, and they show it, however, they were too difficult for the average investor. Complementing the article on international trade, Solo added a caveat lector. 
But God forbid that a reader without knowledge of economics should try to understand protectionism by consulting the new Palgrave. In his review, George Stigler commended the dictionary's non-technical and conceptually rich article on social choice which was written by Kenneth Arrow, among numerous excellent articles. However, Stigler criticized the inclusion of dozens of articles in mathematical economics, which failed to provide intuitive introductions to the problem, how it was solved, and what the solution is. These articles were written, not for a tolerably competent economist, but exclusively for fellow specialists. Exclusion of empirical material Whitaker wrote. Readers to whom economics is nothing if not a science based on empirical inquiry may be dismayed by the lack of attention to empirical studies and factual matters. Stigler criticized the new Palgrave for largely ignoring empirical economics, economic data, summary statistics, and econometric investigations. According to Stigler, the empirical investigation of consumption and production functions has profoundly influenced microeconomic theory, while the empirical investigation of price levels has profoundly influenced monetary economics. The new Palgrave's neglect of empirical economics also weakened its treatment of economic theory in the history of economic thought. Furthermore, the editors failed to explain their neglect of empirical economics while they gave large space to treatments of technical economics, especially mathematical economics and faddish topics, wrote Stigler. The article on profit and profit theory does not contain a single number for what profits are or ever have been in the United States or any other country, or any reference to any source that might provide such a number, wrote Herbert Stein, who complained there are articles about elasticities of this or that but no estimate of the elasticity of anything, reviewing the critics of the overemphasis on theoretical and doctrinal economics. Editor Milgate admitted that the new Palgrave was flawed by its neglect of empirical economics. Criticisms of undue weight for heterodox approaches Robert M. Solo criticized the 1987 edition for slighting mainstream economics by giving excessive space to the dissenting fringes within academic economics namely Marxist economics as well as Austrian persuasion, post-Keynesians, and neo-Ricardian. Nevertheless, there is usually a definite consensus, there is one now, and an accurate picture of the discipline would make that clear. It would have to give dissent a fair shake. It would have to treat mainstream ideas critically but it should keep the various paradigms in proportion. I do not think the new Palgrave has managed to do that. The most obvious, though not the most important, manifestation of imbalance is the large number of items devoted to Marxist themes, from abstract and concrete labor to vulgar economy. Some of the articles are informative, some are mystifying, but that is not the point. Marx was an important and influential thinker, and Marxism has been a doctrine with intellectual and practical influence. The fact is, however, that most serious English-speaking economists regard Marxist economics as an irrelevant dead end. The new Palgrave does not take up the issue head-on, but I think it gives a false impression of the state of play by this deadpan statement. It is rather as if a medical dictionary were to intersperse articles on mainstream orthopedics, written by orthopedists, with articles on osteopathy, written by osteopaths, and were to leave it at that. The 1987 dictionary's discussion of heterodox approaches was also criticized by George Stigler, who complained that these articles were written by sympathetic editors in a partisan manner. The selection of sympathetic writers is in fact a general practice in Palgrave II. Israel Kirzner's essay on the Austrian economists does not hint at the existence of error, misrepresentation of critics, or tasteless attacks upon the German historical school, and Klaus Henning did little better with Bohm Barwerk. An ersatz Austrian is apparently more loyal than the genuine article. Stigler complained about the extensive and biased articles on Marxist economics, including neo-Ricardian economists, 
a non-professional reader would never guess from these volumes that economists working in the Marx and Sraffian tradition represent a small minority of modern economists, and that their writings have virtually no impact upon the professional work of most economists in major English-language universities. Stiegler provided a table of articles that were biased by Marxist orthodoxy and criticized some authors by name, especially a violently pro-Marxist entry by C. B. McPherson. Earlier editions, R. H. Inglis Palgrave's Dictionary of Political Economy, 3V, was the forerunner of the new Palgrave. The initial contractual agreement between Palgrave and the publisher Macmillan and Co. is dated 1888. Serial installments in 1891-92 had disappointing sales. An appendix was added to Volume 3 in 1908, so completing publication of the set. The dictionary was wide-ranging and sometimes idiosyncratic. It included for example a comprehensive treatment of laws on property and commercial transactions. Professional reaction has been described as generally favorable and unsurprising, given that almost all economists of any repute had already endorsed the enterprise by agreeing to contribute nearly 30 years after the first volume appeared. Palgrave's Dictionary of Political Economy, edited by Henry Higgs, appeared with Palgrave's name added to the title but few changes in structure or contents.